<clears throat> Believe it or not, computers have a hard time being random. But not me, lol, omg, I'm so random and quirky, xd. Hmm. This can't be the right script. Oh, here it is. The Linear Congruential Generator, often referred to as LCG, is one of the most basic and long-running standards for generating pseudorandom numbers. Or, at least that's what Wikipedia says. I don't know, I didn't really read up on the history, but like most things, I just want to understand how the damn thing worked. So, like a kid taking a radio apart, I got to work. The equation is relatively simple. X sub n plus 1 is equal to A times X sub n plus C mod M. And even though it sounds like I just had a stroke, it's all simple math and easily programmable if you understand a few things. Assuming you know addition and multiplication, there are two things that may not be common to the average folk. Firstly, and probably the easiest to explain, is the mod or modulo. In programming, it is often represented by a percentage symbol, but in real life, it's represented by a rainbow flag because mod's gay, am I right? The modulo means you are to divide by a number, and the result should be the remainder of the operation. Meaning, 49 mod 10 would be 9 because 10 goes into 49 four times, leaving 9 left over. 33 mod 12 equals 9, 15 mod 20 equals 15, etc. A big part of this deals with the modulo. If you need to, do a bit of tinkering to make sure you understand how the modulo works before continuing. Next, the subscript numbers, or more formally known as the tiny numbers, are a type of iterative operation which basically means the result of the current operation is a variable in the next operation. This means that x sub n is the result from the last operation, which brings up the question, what if this is the first operation? No big deal, we can just provide a number for the first equation, and we call this number the seed. The seed is any number randomly chosen by the user. Generally, it's meant to be less than the modulus or variable m, but at least for my testing this is just formality. Lastly, variables a, c, and the modulus or variable m are numbers that we have to decide on. So how do we choose? We could just input any random number and it would probably be fine, right? Well, let's try it. If we set a equal to 3, x sub n equal to 7, c equal to 5, and m equal to 10, we have x sub n plus 1 equals 3 times 7 plus 5 mod 10, making the result of the first operation 6. Now if we plug that 6 back into the equation in place of the x sub n and continue, we get 3. We can keep doing this process. We plug in 3, we get 4. We plug in 4, we get 7. We plug in 7, we get 6. We plug in 6, we get 3. Plug in 3 and we get 4. So herein we have the primary problem computer-generated randomness causes. It loops. The number of equations we can do before it loops is called a period. We looped after 4 numbers and considering the modulus was 10 means we had about 40% efficiency out of our combination of numbers. So we need a longer period, right? Well, not necessarily. There are a combination of numbers that will get you 100% efficiency out of the LCG, but it doesn't make the series of numbers more random. For example, we can set variable A and C equal to 1 and start the seed at 0, and we will get 100% efficiency no matter what the modulus is set at. The only catch is that it increments from 1 to the modulus and then ultimately loops. So, for f**k's sake, what numbers do we use? Well, that that's a bit of a loaded question that I'm nowhere near qualified to answer. Kind of. I have three answers, each on a different spectrum of ridiculous depending on who you are, and one answer that's kind of normal. Firstly, the normal one. Fortunately, LCGs are popular and have been around since the 50s, and the Wikipedia page just so happens to have a table of parameters that are in use by some runtime libraries and compilers. If I were needing to write my own LCG for whatever reason, I would probably use these numbers, but maybe for whatever reason this isn't good enough. Well, first on the ridiculous scale, we have this paper by this guy. 
This paper outlines a bunch of different combinations of LCGs that have high efficiency and maintain randomness, but the only drawback is that you have to be considerably smarter than me to be able to read it. And for someone who dropped out of college and barely paid attention in high school, this paper is gibberish, and I don't want to spend the time required to learn the vocabulary necessary to comprehend what's going on, but maybe you do, so link is in the description below. Next on the ridiculous scale is the whole Dobell theorem. And even though Hull and Dobell wrote a relatively readable 26-page paper on the topic, apparently all 26 pages boil down to three rules. One, the modulus and C are relatively prime. Two, A minus one is divisible by all prime factors of the modulus. And three, if the modulus is divisible by four, then A minus one needs to be divisible by four as well. And yes, I did rip those rules right from Wikipedia because I also had no interest in testing this, nor reading a 26-page paper. Again, link in the description if you are more dedicated than I am. And lastly, on the ridiculous spectrum, and the only reason I can make this video in a week, we can just randomly pick some big-ass numbers and run with it. Because it doesn't take a rocket scientist to look at all these papers and Wikipedia pages to understand that the correct and efficient numbers are like Optimus, big and prime. Because honestly, if we have a modulus that is somewhere in the billions, even if we pick a combination of numbers with an efficiency as low as 1%, we will still have millions of random numbers to go through before it loops. This is also easy to code in a few minutes. This is also where it went completely off the rails. I wrote a terribly inefficient program to check the efficiency of any combination of numbers I chose. The idea was to let the calculations run and with every equation check against all numbers produced thus far, and if it has been produced before, then voila, it's the start of a loop. Genius! I can then break from the equation and calculate the efficiency by comparing the numbers produced versus the modulus. Yeah, I figured it would take a while for the program to run, maybe a couple of minutes at best, but Turns out, the program I wrote increases the amount of time it takes by a factor of 100 with every increase of a factor of 10 to the modulus. And that seems like an exaggeration, but I did the math and tested this. The math is accurate up to 1%, so essentially it depends on how my CPU feels in that moment. Which is a fancy way of saying it takes f***ing forever. And that's not an exaggeration either. If I wanted to calculate 1 billion numbers with 100% efficiency, it would take 41 years. If anything, I learned why it's important to have strong passwords because I'm fairly sure brute force cracking is the same exact thing as the program I wrote today. But my program still works as a proof of concept because out of the 86 combinations of significantly smaller numbers I fed into the equation, I was only able to achieve under 1% efficiency twice. Even if our efficiency were 0.1%, if our modulus were 10 billion, we would still have a period of 10 million numbers, and it is ridiculously hard to get 0.1%. If you wanted to put even a minimum amount of effort into it, instead of role-playing as a cat on your keyboard, you could try tinkering with prime numbers as you were far more likely to have a higher efficiency, I think. Lastly, you may be wondering, okay, we wrote an LCG using numbers in the billions. Only problem is that the algorithm outputs values anywhere from zero to our billion value modulus. What if I need a value from, I don't know, 69 to 420? Firstly, I'd reply, your questions are really long and overbearing, but also your question is valid, dear viewer. After all, most random number functions will allow you to choose a minimum number and a maximum. So here's what you do. Be warned, it's more math. Firstly, we normalize the output from the LCG by casting the output as a float and dividing the output by the modulus, giving us a value between zero and one, or technically 0.99 repeating or something, but I digress. Next, because we have already determined our range, 69 to 420, we subtract the minimum from the maximum, so 420 minus 69 equals 351. Now we take that result and multiply it by the normalized number, making the range now from zero at the minimum to 351 at the max. Lastly, all we have to do is add the minimum to the random number, 
then recast the number as an integer, and we have our desired range because 0 plus 69 is 69, and 351 plus 69 is 420. That's it. I don't exactly know how to end this video. Turns out, uh, computer-generated numbers are just a sham. Nothing in this world is real, and I'm full of disappointment, but you could turn that disappointment right around by subscribing, commenting, and liking. Or don't, not like I'll write a song about you or anything. Uh, okay, bye.